Hello. So one of the professional hats that I wear is that I'm a first aid instructor and so in this video I want to teach you what to do if your child ever loses a finger. Now ideally we've prevented that situation from happening in the first place by teaching our children about safety around doors and that means teaching young children don't put your hand in this part or in this part. There's two sides to the door where they can get squished. Um, teaching older siblings to watch out for the little ones. Always making sure that when you close the door behind you other people's hands are out of the way, things like that. But if we find ourselves in the position where, nope, something went wrong and a finger is no longer attached, here's what you're going to do. First of all, stay calm, as calm as you possibly can when that happens. Um, your child is going to gauge how to react based on how you are reacting. If you take a moment and go, okay, breathe and then speak calmly, that will help your child to know that they're going to be okay. If you lose your mind and act like they're dying, your child is going to think that they're dying and they're going to panic. It will escalate the uh, situation rapidly. You are either going to spread calm or you are going to spread panic. As a parent, you can choose which one you spread. So let's go for calm. Next thing, we're going to stop the bleeding. Your child is the first priority. So if they've lost a finger, grab something that you can use to stop the bleeding. You can get them to hold the bandage in place or try to get some assistance. Somebody else can hold it. If there are no free hands, see what you can find that lets you strap it into place, maybe wrapping a bandage around the hand to hold that in place. Um, even a shoelace, we often have to improvise. Maybe you're at the park or something when it happens. Um, so stop the bleeding, preserve your child first. Let's stop the bleeding from the main part of their body. And then we find the body part. Just a heads up, if you visit somebody who's a first aid instructor, we have all sorts of weird things in our houses, like amputated body parts, totally normal for us. So grab a finger. Um, here we go. This amputated body part, what do I do with it? I want to wrap it. So my first step, I don't worry about stopping the bleeding from the limb or the part that's missing. Instead, I prioritize gently wrapping it in something that is clean. Um, for a body part this small, I want a small wrap. If a child lost an arm, we'd need a bigger wrap, maybe a sweatshirt or a towel. The main idea here is that the wrap is proportionate to the size of the body part that they lost, and we're just protecting the skin from coming in contact with the ice or whatever it is that we're using to cool the body part. Um, you don't ever want the skin to come in contact with ice because it'll freeze the cells and kill them. Rather than preserving the limb, it'll destroy it. A client of mine who sawed his hand off with a ta uh, sawed his sorry his thumb off with a table saw, um, he and his wife did exactly what they thought they were supposed to do from having watched TV. They found the thumb, put it in a bag full of ice, a little Ziploc baggie, took it to the hospital, and the triage nurse who did not have the best bedside manner <laughs> took one look at it and said, "Well, that's garbage," and threw it in the garbage can right in front of him. That should not have happened, but she was correct. The thumb wasn't preserved; it was frostbitten. It had died. This little wrap here is going to keep that from happening. So we put a gentle little wrap around it and then we're going to bag it. When we put things in ice, ice starts to melt over time and we don't want that limb to be all soggy. Can you imagine if you were a surgeon and somebody handed you this pruny, wrinkly, soggy body part? Um, that's not what it's supposed to look like. So we're going to keep it dry. Just have a little Ziploc bag to help out with that. It does not have to be a Ziploc. Wrap it in you know, a garbage bag if that's all you had, grocery bags. Um, lots of different things available, a poncho, anything that's not going to let water through. After I've done that, I'm going to cool it. So I do have another Ziploc baggie here. I'm going to stick this in here and I have ice cubes available. So maybe you're grabbing ice from the freezer, but if you don't have ice cubes, don't worry. Anything cool will do the job. So frozen vegetables, ah, awesome. Pack it in peas or french fries if you have to. But what you're going to do is you're going to start adding something into that baggie, packing it all the way around. And if this were the real deal, I would be filling up this bag. I just don't want to waste your time. So ice cubes, ice cubes, ice cubes. I'm surrounding that body part. I'm sealing it up. And the last thing I want to make sure that I've done is labeled it. So you grab a marker and you write your child's name on it. When you get to the hospital, when they're traveling with paramedics or if you're driving them to the hospital, um, this bag with a name on it suggests to anybody in the scene this is supposed to be traveling with somebody. If it's an unlabeled bag, it can honestly get mistaken for garbage, picked up, tossed out, left under a bench. Um, but this says it goes with somebody. Well, who's this person? Oh, it's that person. Great. It goes on their gurney and rolls away with them as they head into surgery. Um, make sure it is labeled. Also, to the best of your ability, make sure that it travels with your child. As much as we might be thinking, oh my goodness, like can I'll drive them to the hospital. Can you bring the finger when you've got it packed up? 
it's actually better to wait a few moments and then have the finger go with you. A really bad scenario, especially if you live in a city where there are multiple hospitals, or the country where it's an hour that way or an hour that way, you don't want to get to a hospital and find out that the person bringing the limb went somewhere else. So travel together, really good principle. And that's it. So in the end, back the whole thing up, prevention is always going to be the best way to go. Um, but if it does happen, we're going to do our best to stay calm, spread calm to our child, and then we're going to wrap it, bag it, cool it, and tag it and that's going to increase the chances of the doctors being able to reattach your child's finger. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions please feel free to write them in the comments. I'll be happy to respond. Um, and also do you guys have any other emergencies? Things that you know you're thinking oh what if this happened to my kid what would I do? Any first aid scenarios feel free to make requests and I'd be happy to make a video just for you. Chances are if you're wondering something there's 2,000 other parents wondering the exact same thing so let's make sure people feel confident. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe and share with anybody you think it would be helpful for. All the best.